chapel, we'll have a Slime Executive Board meeting right over here in the other room. And then we also have a Student Government SGA meeting, sorry, at 12. And I'll be it. And also, Mr. McCants, if you would please come up. One brief announcement, and then I will prayer. All of those involved, all of these students involved with taking this as a class, as a class. If you'll meet me back there, I just have a few things to say to you, so and it won't take very long. What I would like for you to know is I'm going to be expecting from each one of you. Uh, a brief one page, three or four paragraph uh, paper telling me what what the uh, speaker has to say so that uh, I can see how your writing skills are and that you pay attention, but I think it's important that you uh, present a, a brief one page, three or four paragraph paper. That would be next week, not this week, but next week. I'll go ahead and give you credit for a paper today since we're beginning today. Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for this opportunity we have to gather together in your name. We thank you for this opportunity to gather students, faculty, and staff in order to praise you and honor you and worship you. Lord, I pray that we would indeed listen to the speaker or speakers of today, that we would take into our hearts what they have to say. Lord, we thank you for this university that uh, honors you and that praises you. And Lord, we just ask that you would give us a blessing for having been here. We ask in Jesus.
first of all, yes, I am standing up for those who are wondering. So let's get that out of the way. Today's message, when, when Dr. Dill approached me about uh, speaking at chapel, it's about our relationship, uh, or it's more specifically the relationship of USW Baseball with St. Helen Catholic Church, located on Bender Street. Um, I had initially uh, thought of someone that would come in who's part of the congregation that would speak to you and speak on behalf of the congregation on the value of the young men that you have attending this institution. However, um, she had to weigh out her options. She had, uh, her daughter had her first grandbaby or come and speak um, on behalf of USW Baseball. So I went ahead and gave her a pass. She's in New Orleans, Mary Jordan. They had their first grandbaby. So um, I just added a few more elements uh, to our spiel today. And today's about reflection. Simple reflection. If I walk away from the microphone, I think my voice kind of carries out there somewhat. Um, faculty, staff, um, the majority of this can be directed at our student athletes. However, there are elements of this that I think as adults, we can also sit back and do a little reflecting of our own. Uh, reflection on who we are, where we're at, spiritually, emotionally, uh, the journeys that uh, each and every one of us are traveling. Uh, many of us are, are, are not outspoken about our faith. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's, that's you, if you're more intrinsic, that, that's okay too. Uh, many of you are spiritually, uh, you, you do have a, a, a faith, you do have a maker, but you're not one to generally uh, send that message out to your peers. That's okay too. Um, so we're going to see elements in here. Uh, as you see, I'm going to do a little personal uh, testament to you, a little bit about who I am, my journey, and I think you'll understand my concept of servant leadership in why I do the things I do, why I believe in the things I believe, why I send the message out to my kids, specifically in the baseball program or the athletic department, why I send that message out in, in the manner I do. Um, in, in order to, to truly uh, embrace that message, I think you have to understand where I come from, and then I think you specifically will do some reflection, and hopefully at the end of today, you can take some elements with you and study them, think about it, in, in, in hopefully the days to come, months to come, years to come, you remember bits and pieces of, of the next 15 to 20 minutes. We'll go ahead and get started. Co-authoring your story. Whether we want to believe it or not, every single one of us has to have a co-author in our story. We are forever writing our own story as we exist today. Everything you do, every decision you make, is part of your story. Where do you end up? is part of your story. The decisions you make leading up to today, beyond, is your story. Growing up with the parents that you had, with the legal guardians, the grandparents, whoever raised you, that's part of your story. You can't change that. Well, who's going to co-author your story? Every single person in here needs a co-author. I'm at a point where I do have a co-author. I have a faith, a strong faith. It is mine to keep. No one sold me on it. It's a choice that I made. We'll go ahead and get started. A few elements of today's message are some of the activities that the USW baseball team, along with, I will also include women's soccer. They showed up, eight young ladies showed up on a Saturday morning to also assist this year. But here's some of the activities, some of the projects that we've taken on since I've been a part of this program uh, back nine years ago uh, as the baseball coach and, and, and uh, dean of athletics. Uh, prior to that, seven years before, assistant baseball coach, uh, volunteer, top of the school system. Prior to that, three years as a student athlete. So all of these are activities, Toys for Tots, Humane Society. Before they moved, it was located on Alabama Saturday morning. There was three straight. We went down down the tour park, we built by hand some uh, dog kennels, some runs for the dogs. We, we scooped, we fed, we ran. Kids volunteered beyond that. After those three Saturdays, there were still kids that followed up and continued back. So we look at servant leadership. What is servant leadership? Is it a movement? We're going to talk a little bit about that. But it's all about a commitment to a lifestyle. And in humane society, Isaiah's Kitchen, we've, we've done food projects for Isaiah's Kitchen. We had the food bank on Marlin this last year in which uh, every single person within the baseball program contributed uh, to that project. Uh, the kitchen at St. Helena's, we stopped the kitchen there before. We set up for a Christian concert along with women's soccer. The young lady showed up on a Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. We 
we were finished in a couple of hours on something that could have taken all day. So for that, I, I appreciate it. Uh, the family fair. Everyone hears about the family fair at St. Helena Catholic Church. One of the biggest fundraisers there. Um, it's a lot of work. And the congregation is getting to the point where a lot of young blood needs to get involved. And that's where these young men, uh, young ladies also have volunteered. The volleyball team has volunteered in years past. They volunteered their time to work books. Uh, the tamal is making. That's uh, a couple of Saturdays. Uh, many of you uh, have participated in this event. And if you haven't, you look forward to it each and every year, whether you believe it or not. You, you, you sit and listen to the stories that some of the guys share with each other the next year when we're sitting at tables and, and we're going through the process. Many of them were talking about last year, the first year that they did this. It's all about the experiences we have. Booth set up, game booths, tear down, clean up. It's not an easy task. And these young men commit themselves, once again, servant leadership is about commitment, and they commit themselves to these, these projects. Let's continue. What is servant leadership? To me, personally, servant leadership is about relationships. It is about the projects you complete, yes, by all means, yes. But it's also about the relationships that you guys are now creating as young men and women at this institution. It's part of our mission statement. Part of our mission statement as adults, servant leadership, for me, the relationships are more valued than the essential project that we're completing. Because those relationships, we're continually going back to those relationships. We're going back to those individuals who are now offering jobs to our students and our student athletes, our graduates, because they know what we stand for, they know what we value. And these young people are committing their time and efforts to completing these projects, but little do they know they're creating these relationships. You have to have a belief system when you look at servant leadership. You have to have a belief system in a higher existence. If you don't have one, that's okay. That's okay, I tell my guys all the time, if you have a faith, great. If you don't have one, that's okay too. If you want one, we'll find one. If you're not ready, that's okay. There's plenty of time for it. You're here four to five years completing your degree. If you find it, that's only a, a simple blessing for us for you to take for the rest of your life. That's an investment for us. As you're investing in your institution, hopefully we'll open up some doors and avenues and answer those questions that you have specifically. Because I've been in that seat before, back in 94. I've been there before. I came in as someone who didn't know the difference between come here and sickle. I sat there wondering, what is my life going to be like? Who would have thought, Mr. McCants, 19 years later, is seeing me speak in chapel. When I sat there and we hosted chapel with maybe 20 people showing up, Dr. Summer, Mr. Goldman, Miss Chapman, and the list goes on and on. Who would have thought? But hopefully you guys can see through me, whatever your dreams and aspirations are, you adopt a lifestyle of servant leadership. So what truly is it? You gotta have a belief system, you have to have free will. When you look at servant leaders and creating servant leaders, it's about free will. People believe that uh, our maker gives us the power of freedom of choice. I believe that. I can choose to do what's right or I can choose to do what's wrong. I have an 11 and an 8 year old. We've talked about that concept, the freedom of choice. Are we going to embrace the plan that is set forth before us? Are we going to embrace that? Or are we going to make the choices on our own? I have someone question. Someone says, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? Well, it's about choices. It's not allowing it to happen to good people. It's about the choices we make. It's about the choices we make to drink, to smoke marijuana, to do the drugs, to fail the classes. Those are choices we make individually. But we have that freedom of choice. Prayer. To be a servant leader. Many of us pray, and we know how to pray. 11 and 8 year old are sitting there learning how to pray. What do you say? I've had someone tell me before, one of my players, what do I say, coach, when I pray? Great question. Say whatever you want. You don't want to say a word? That's okay, too. Sit there. Close your eyes. Contemplate. Focus on what you've done. Where you want to go. How have you impacted people? You don't have to say anything. Well, prayer is strong. My mom gave me a great, great uh, a little phrase that stays with me. She always talks about prayer. She said, you can pray all you want, but if you don't act on that prayer, that prayer is all for naught. She said, imagine this. Imagine you in a boat in the middle of a pond, and that, that, that uh, engine 
it breaks on you. What are you going to do? You can pray for wisdom. I am not mechanically inclined by all means. I can pray for the strength to use that paddle or that oar in that boat to get me to shore. I can pray for wind to get me to shore, but unless I physically do something about that prayer, it's all for naught. So prayer is strong. Use prayer every single day. You're going to see where I talk a little bit about choosing your own attitude in prayer. That's something that we control, no one else does. We're creating memories in our stories that we are co-authoring. We're, re we're creating memories that that's all we have. Our last breath is going to be about the memories that we have. Not about your teammates giving you something on your birthday. Not about the car that you wanted. Not about the house that you wish you had. Not about the rings you wish you had. Not about all the things that are tangible. But it's about the memories that you're creating. What memories are you creating? Through a life of servant leadership or being a servant leader, those memories are going to be forever. You're going to take those with you. And hopefully there's a belief in an existence beyond. Motivation. What motivates you on a daily basis to be a servant leader? Every single day you wake up, you look over those of us who have a spouse. Do we look over at that spouse and give praises to God say, thank you. One more day. One more day. Or do we sit and think, boy, I got chemistry today. I sure hope. I sure hope that class is canceled. I sure hope college algebra, because I know that's a tough one for my kid. I hope today college algebra is going to be canceled. What are the first words when we open our eyes to start our day? What are they? Think about it. Not going to ask you. Think about it. Is it my back hurts? Is it, man, it's 9 o'clock. I have to get up. Student athletes. Is that what it is? Blessings. What a blessing to have a voice that we have every single Wednesday. Let's give her a hand. We talk about blessings. We talk about blessings. What are they? Something as simple as, if you look at the other room, there were two young children. Innocence. What a blessing. Having your health every single day. What a blessing. The ability to kick a soccer ball. The ability to throw a baseball. To shoot a basket. The ability to hit a tennis racket. To hit the, the, the ball. What a blessing. Simply just to get out of bed. What a blessing. When we look at a life of a servant leader. What do you want out of life? What are you willing to commit to? Once again, it's a commitment it's not today, it's not tomorrow, it's not next month. It's a commitment. Superstitions. If you look at a baseball player, you look at their baseball hat, their game hat, they're always going to have little things written underneath their hat. Martin Adams said several years ago, scriptures underneath his hat. Many of them dance. Many of them saying something that motivates them to be better today than they were yesterday. So what do you use as motivation today? January 23rd. What a great day. Do you, do you see it that way? Or do you see it, Coach is making me go to chapel because I get a discount on my servant leadership. Think about it. Reflect. Reflect. As adults, it's Wednesday. 30 minutes away from work. Are you thinking about the message here? Or are you thinking about, i got to get that email out. i got to do this. I gotta, I'm guilty of it just like anybody else. I'm guilty of it. What kind of legacy are you going to leave? As servant leaders, I will go back to relationships. What legacy are we leaving? Do something that no one wants to do, but do it. Write your obituary. Boy, that'll wake you up a little bit. That'll wake you up. What's your relationship like with your family members? What are they going to say about you? Have a friend write your obituary. As a servant leader, what are they going to say? He volunteered. He contributed. He enjoyed. He was a person of faith. He was a great husband, great father, great brother. What are they going to say? Write your own obituary. 
That will get you to open up your eyes about where you are at spiritually. Why do we do, why do, we do things? Is it self-gratification, publicity, or just because? Last May, I was, I was uh, given a great opportunity to speak at a church in Lubbock. All to all graduates, 300 graduates, in their families. We talked about just because, two words that mean so much. And this, this is part of, of today's message that as adults, we can grow with this. Do we do things just because it's the right thing to do? Or are we looking for a hidden agenda? How are we doing things? Are we servant leaders as our mission statement uh, uh, precedes us and, and it expects out of us? Or are we doing something just because coach is forcing me to do it? That's okay. At 18 to 24, I had those same thoughts. I had those same thoughts. 19 years later, look where I stand. Because of the choices I make. I know better than you. I am no better than you. But it's all about choices. So just because. Why do you mop the floor before games when no one's around? Just because. Why do you pick up that trash? It's not in my job description. But why do you pick it up on campus? Just because. I see so many people doing things because it's not a part of their daily duties. They, they don't want to do those things. Why not? Why not? It's a reflection of who we are as servant leaders. We do things just because it's the right thing to do. Servant leadership. You choose your attitude. Every single day, that attitude that you have is yours to keep. There's variables that affect it. Yes, I have a long day today. I have meetings galore today. I have this. I have that. I got to do this. I, yes, that affects it. But you still choose your own attitude. No one chooses it for you when you wake up. I have several peers of my own that come in and they're mad at the world. Why? Because they had to wake up and come to work. Student athletes, I, I taught and you come in at 8 o'clock, you're mad at the world because you had to wake up. Count your blessings. But you choose your own attitude. If, if you choose the right attitude, you come to work, you have a positive effect on everybody. You have a great effect on your peers. Chances are someone walks away who was also upset and they, boy, what do I have to complain about? That person's in here doing what they need to do. You know what? Let me clear my mind. Let me get back to where I need to be. Back to relationships. Choose your attitude every single day. Life's going to happen, young people. Drugs, divorce, relationships, and it goes on and on and on. Life is going to happen. You can't stop that. But you can control the choices that you make. How do you, how do you bounce back from what you've gone through? Are you looking for a co-author to help you through? Every single day you wake up before you go to bed, you say just a simple prayer. Get me through the next day, Heavenly Father. That's all I ask. I don't know how. But get me through that next day. Or are you mad at the world? That's okay. That's okay. Be mad at the world. At some point, hopefully something is going to occur that will open your eyes. And will allow you to be also, or also to be a servant leader. But what is that moment going to be? Is it going to be something negative? Is it going to be the loss of a life? Is it going to be hitting rock bottom? Why not start today? Nothing has happened to you, if that's you. Why not start today to be a servant leader? Why not? Actions over words. Doers. Be a doer. I'm a doer. There's something called lip service. I do not like when people tell me what they're about to do, or what they're going to do, or what I, I'll do next week, or what I'm going to do next month. I, I, don't, I don't like that. That's great to hear. That's great. But be a doer. Actions. Actions speak loud. Cliche. But there's so much value to that. Be a doer. There's something up here called obedient Christians. And that was a, that was a phrase my dad, bless his soul, passed. But would always say, don't be that person that goes to church, sits in church, looks around, hopefully everyone looks at you. 
They see you in church, and then when you leave, you don't even pay attention. You don't know what was said. You don't live a Christian lifestyle. You don't treat people the way they want to be treated. Don't be a convenient Christian behind closed doors where you completely turn your face. You're oblivious to what you say you are. And it's all about how we treat people. I can tell you all these things about me, but if I go to practice, and I read the right act to my kids, and I don't treat them like I would want someone to treat my 11 and 8 year old, something's wrong. Something's wrong. But you're not going to see that. I take every approach, good and bad, as if it was my kids. How do I want someone in a position that's going to make a decision, good or bad, how do I want them to treat those individuals, those young people? You make a mistake, doesn't mean you're a bad person. It means you're making poor choices. So you have a choice. You can say what you're going to do. You can say that you're a Christian. You can say these things, but what are you truly about? Your actions will slowly come out, and you will see exactly who you are. Cooperative spirit. Maintenance here on this campus does not get enough credit. You talk about someone who has cooperative spirit. Yes, thank you. Cooperative spirit. The entire crew, from the cleaning uh, crew all the way to, to, to Lonnie, Wes, John, it, the, everyone involved with maintenance. I tell my guys, maintenance is here to keep the grounds. Cleaning crews to clean the buildings, not clean up after you. Well, a wise person once told me, it's easy to treat someone who has an effect on your life well. But your true spirit is how do you treat someone who doesn't have an effect on your life? How do you treat the person that strikes who cannot count change back to you? How do you treat the person at the window at McDonald's, the fast food approach, and they tell you to move up because your, your order's not ready? You're in a hurry. How do you treat them? Are you rude? We're all guilty of it. I put myself in those same, the, those same steps. But cooperative spirit. Who's willing to do something to go out of their way Utilize their time to do something for someone else. Who's willing to do that? It's not easy. We say sometimes we're willing to do it, but you know what? I really got to leave at this time. I gotta, I gotta. Time is our most valuable asset. So to be a servant leader, you have to give your time. Not when it's always convenient for you, though. <coughs> Briefly, I'll let you look at these. These are uh, characteristics of servant leadership. Uh, English professors, yes, I did uh, document where I did get this from, like where there's no plagiarism. Uh, listening, we have to be listeners and servant leaders. We have to motivate. We have to be motivators every single day. <laughs> we can be motivators every single day as adults. Motivate someone in your office. Motivate your kids in your classroom. Even when they show up, baseball, they miss a class. They miss two classes, and I find out. Motivate them. I'll motivate you. It's to be better people. We'll be out there at the 45-pound plate running, but it's not punishment. It's motivation. Okay? Motivation. Empathize. Healing. Awareness. Self-awareness. View situations. View the situations in, a, in, in, in forward. They're integrated, holistic. As a result, gets better understanding about ethics and values. Not all of us have the same ethics and values. From adults to students. Not all of us have the same background. But I truly believe we all know what's right and what's wrong. Even as adults, we also know what's right and what's wrong. Persuasion. Servant leader does not take advantage of their power and status by coercing compliance. They rather try to convince those they manage. I like the convincing part. I want to walk the same path that the coaches do in the athletic department. I don't expect them to do any more, any less than I do. There's a, a, a gentleman in town, Scott Baton, owns Eunice Pump and Supply. Gets up every morning at 3 o'clock, sweeps his shop, goes to work, does his thing, comes back, oil field work. Comes back in, sweeps it again at 8 o'clock, tells me the story of a guy saying, you're the owner, why are you doing this? Because I'm going to outwork every single employee that I have to prove a point. I'm not above doing what you're doing. I've been there. He is modeling his words. Are we going to model our words as servant leaders? Or are we just going to say, you know what, this week, I remember being a servant leader. So this is what I'm going to do this week. Next week, I'm not going to worry about it. 
next month on the road trip this summer. I'm going to forget about servant leadership. It's a movement. It's a phase. It's not like a, a Gangnam style dance or whatever. It's a phase. It's going to go in. It's going to go out. No. You have to commit to this lifestyle. It is a lifestyle of making a choice to do for others. Are you willing to do that? Four values. I tell my guys. Faith, family, team, me. Faith will help you find one. Family, keep their needs above yours. Team, keep your teammates, your spouse later on in life, and your children's needs above yours, and you. Those are our four priorities in that order. However, if it was a pyramid, it starts with you. You're the base. You're at the bottom. Without you taking care of you and you doing the right things, nothing else matters. If you're making poor choices and you're, you're, you're doing things that your kids are not proud of, that is a tough question to answer when the kids ask, where's dad? He's in prison. Many of us have experienced that. I've experienced that in our family. So none of us are excluded, regardless of race, title, title we carry, socioeconomic status. None of us are excluded from life happening. Last but not least, are you willing to be a servant leader? There's our mission statement. We read it all the time. We see it. We see it. Are they words? Or are they actions? When someone comes into our office, we can stare at our computer screen, give them our back while they're talking to us. When someone needs a little more assistance to find out what needs to be done, what the paperwork process is, are we going to say, well, look it up on the internet, look it up on our homepage, or are we going to go out of our way? What are we going to do? That's a question I hope that you answer on your own. But if you choose a co-author in your story, I promise you, you'll have lessons galore. I'm not talking about winning the lottery. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about living life the right way. Doing the right thing. Treating people the right way. Your story, when you take your last breath, the legacy you leave is going to be one where people, when they talk, they mention your name, they're going to smile. They're going to smile. And that right there is proof of a servant leader. Thank you. Let's all bow for our business prayer. God, we are grateful that you are here with us, and we thank you for the privilege of being servant leaders. We ask that as we leave this place, we will take these words to heart and guide us the way we appropriate your lifestyle in ours. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.